And now I'm going to read the rest of the story. Let us listen for God's word as we hear it recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 28 through 35. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened to them on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. May God open our hearts and minds to this word this morning. Well, millions of people suffer from it. We can hardly watch TV without being treated to commercials for products that offer relief of this common ailment. Most of us are familiar with the discomfort just before Behind the breastbone, those of us who are lucky only experience heartburn occasionally. The two disciples in our story this morning experienced another kind of heartburn, a good kind. Our gospel writer Luke reports the witness of the disciples who met the risen Christ on the road to, De to Emmaus. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? We do not know much about these disciples. Perhaps they lived in Emmaus or nearby, or maybe they were visiting relatives who lived close enough to Jerusalem to commute to the Passover festivities. Walking along the road, Cleopas and his companion, possibly his wife or another relative, are debriefing from the hectic and tragic week they had experienced from Jerusalem. A stranger comes up beside them on the road and eavesdrops on their conversation. The stranger asks what they are discussing, and after expressing dismay at his ignorance of the events, Cleopas and his companion give him the lowdown on what's been happening in Jerusalem. The death and resurrection of Jesus are big news, the biggest news of that day. To the seeming stranger, the two disciples describe their hopes about Jesus, their grief in the wake of, their cru of his crucifixion, and the baffling discovery of the empty tomb. The walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus was about seven miles, an easy journey for those accustomed to walking. This story has been recounted through the centuries, a treasured memory, one of the few recorded accounts of the appearance of the resurrected Christ. Mary, the first one to encounter the risen Jesus, did not, did not immediately recognize him. She thought he was a gardener. Like Mary, the disciples on the road to Emmaus did not identify Jesus. The tense of the Greek word used here indicates that the disciples were kept from seeing their companion's identity. Distracted by their grief, the disciples did not readily acknowledge Jesus. They certainly were not expecting to encounter him. 
Continuing their journey, the disciples tell the seeming stranger about the events that had occurred in Jerusalem, including the report of the women who saw and heard an angel proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. Within these disciples, the women's testimony had generated astonishment, but not faith. With the other disciples in hiding in Jerusalem, we marvel at the openness of these two who were heading out of town. The two Emmaus companions declare themselves to be followers of Jesus. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, they say. Jesus is not a passive listener in their conversation. He reminds these grieving, disappointed disciples of the sacred texts that speak of the Messiah. He reminds them that it was necessary for the, the Messiah to suffer because, and he, be, because that would allow him to enter his glory. As they approach their destination and the stranger appears to be moving on down the road, Cleopas and his companion offer hospitality. If you and I were taking a walk and happened to fall into conversation with someone we met on the sidewalk or trail, most of us probably wouldn't invite them to spend the night with us. We are cautious about offering hospitality to strangers and for good reason. However, hospitality occurs in many ways. Simply making space for conversation can be offering hospitality. I wonder if we aren't perhaps too cautious about welcoming engagement and conversation with those we meet along the way. Do we miss opportunities to host Christ in our midst? At, at, the, at the time and in the society, these disciples on the road to Emmaus they had, the custom was that they offer hospitality. Now, custom also required that Jesus decline their offer unless they insisted. This episode reminds us of the story of the angel's appearance to Abraham and Sarah at Mamre, recorded in Genesis 18, 1 through 15. In both stories, the hosts fail to recognize the significance of their guests but extend hospitality nonetheless. In each of these opportunities for hospitality, the hosts receive far more than they give. They receive both a revelation and a blessing from God. Sometimes those who seem to be strangers to us can offer us something precious. So Jesus accepts the offered hospitality. Then the story of the walk to Emmaus turns highly liturgical. We, who are often in worship, will recognize this, the allusions to communion. The risen Christ takes bread and bre blesses it and breaks it. And in this act of blessing and breaking the bread, the eyes of the disciples are opened and they recognize him. The stranger is no longer a stranger, not a stranger at all, but the friend and teacher risen from death. It is clear that God is at work in the disciples. God is opening their eyes. The events of the day climax at the table the risen Christ is revealed through the telling of the story, the interpretation of the scripture, the blessing, and the breaking of bread. After walking seven miles and eating a satisfying meal, you'd think these Emmaus disciples would be ready to hit the road. Or hit the hay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they hit the road instead. Their grief and their fatigue is left behind, and they walk or run the seven miles back to Jerusalem that very evening. They are so excited. 
They cannot keep the good news to themselves. They want to share it with the other followers of Jesus. They had seen the risen Lord. Their hearts were not just gently warmed. They were burning with joy. Now, many of us have been raised regularly attending churches. We've participated in Sunday schools and vacation Bible schools, and we've heard the stories of Jesus. Others of us have come to Christ later in life. We know the stories, but do we know the risen Lord? The early church referred to discipleship to Jesus as the way. As with the Emmaus disciples, Jesus is revealed to us along the way. We are on a journey of faith, not having arrived at our destination of fully believing, fully seeing, fully understanding. The church is traveling along the road where the risen Christ meets us and walks with us. Along the road, we stop for refreshment, for fellowship that encourages us, for bread that sustains us. Regularly, we gather at the table of our Lord, not as strangers, but as ones whom Jesus has called his friends. Even though we have strayed from the path, taken detours, turned around, faltered in our steps, we continue to get back on the path with Jesus. Each time we gather for worship, we acknowledge the presence of Christ among us. In their own faltering way, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus bore witness to Jesus. They told the story of what had happened to their teacher, whom at first they did not recognize. With burning hearts, they went on to proclaim the good news to the other sad and discouraged disciples who embraced the news with great joy. The Emmaus disciples looked back at their experience of the risen Lord. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. In the presence of Christ, the disciples experienced an inner kindling of awareness, a good kind of heartburn. So what are the moments of spiritual awareness you have experienced in your lives? Can you remember times when you sensed the warming presence of the Spirit, God within you, God among us? The story of the walk to Emmaus demonstrates that belief in Jesus as the risen Lord was not self-evident to his earliest followers. The first disciples came to believe because Jesus appeared to them. The heartwarming experience of the disciples, the infusion of the Holy Spirit, compelled them to witness to their faith. And the faith has been passed along from person to person to person in simple encounters where two or three people share Christ in the midst of their loneliness and love, sadness and joy. The disciples did not keep their heartwarming experiences to themselves. They shared the good news that Christ has risen and he dwells with us, within us, among us. This sharing from person to person to person is what grows the church. You all are looking forward to a new pastor coming here. And I've been wanting to say this 
for as long as I've been here, but I was afraid if I said it, you wouldn't listen to another word I said. <laughs> but I'm going to say it to you now. Growing the church is not up to the pastor. Growing the church is not up to the pastor. It's up to all of us. You need to recall those burning times in you when you were aflame with the Spirit of God, when you knew that Jesus loved you, and that love was so compelling that you had to tell someone else about it. Each of us is called to re recall that, that time when faith was kindled within us and to ask God for opportunities when we might be able to say a word or do a deed or touch someone in the name of Christ. So as you get ready to welcome this new pastor, I hope you will all remember that it's not just up to the pastor. It's up to all of us, all of us who have been called by Christ and befriended by Christ and loved by Christ to go out and share the good news. May our hearts burn with the presence of the Spirit and let us pray for opportunities to share the good news. Christ is risen. Amen.